Another Buds Class 234 reaction video. Today, we're gonna see a lot of quitting. We'll talk about it, we'll kinda go into it a little bit. I'll try to get you in the mind of those quitters. Talk about my experiences a little bit. I hope you enjoy it as always. Smash the subscribe button, hit the ding, the notification bell. I hope you enjoy, let's get started. Class 234 begins its second day of basic underwater demolition SEAL training by running the obstacle course. The mood is somber. Four more students have quit. For the remaining 77 students still recovering from day one, day two promises to be no easier. So day two, they already at 77 people. Most of the buzz classes start with about 200. So they were they were a little bit plussed up a couple years ago, but they normally start in dock with about 200 cats. We two days into training and we have 77. Just understand this, like, like they talk about the animal that is SEAL training, but I say it all the time, most of the people that show up to buzz are completely unprepared for that beast. So they don't last very long, a couple days at most. You get so sore, they can't get out of bed. It's interesting to me that, you know, I got there out of shape, I, but I was a wrestler. I had a whole strong athletic background. I never really got that sore. First couple of days, push-ups, but that was about it, man. But you got some guys that show up, man, and they just get their souls crushed, their body shut down day two or three, and that's a wrap. So let's watch this. they at the O course right now. Or course is pretty cool. I mean, I used to love the O course because you could just putter around, get your 845 and be out. I never took any chances on the O course. Seen a guy fall off the top of the cargo net from 60 feet, man. He was done. Saw a couple cats do some dumb shit on the O course. You know, we had this one dude that kept falling off the slide for life, which to me was unbelievable, man. You just hang on to the damn rope. You at 30 feet, broke his back, got thrown out of training. So the O course is no place to be messing around, but I thought it was a break. You know, you run your O course, you do your thing. Don't take no chances. Don't try to be fucking flamboyant on the O course and get your solid 845 and be done with it. I'm hoping my arms will hold out. It's long put out evolution. About eight minutes, that's about it. Everything you got. Schaefer and Class 234 have run the O course before, but today, the biggest obstacle will be time. The toughest thing is you have to mentally get through the obstacles. It's, it's hard physically, but uh, you can do it as long as you, you tell yourself you can do it. It's okay, let's be honest here, folks. They hyping this shit up for TV. Ain't nobody I ever known afraid of the O course. Nobody. So this is some TV hype where they talking about all this bullshit on the O course and all this other crazy shit. Ain't nobody go to the O course terrified. Nobody. You're fast. For me, the, the worst one would be that slide for life. It's hard. You pretty much explain it by the time you get to that, the platforms. And by the time you're on the line, your arms are spent. It's too shame for the poor line! It takes a lot of self-motivation to get yourself down that line without falling down. It's too shame! It's too shame! It's never one circumstance that overpowers a student. It's an accumulation of events. Where do you are, sir? Where do you are right now? Oh, yeah. So you didn't do the O course. Negative. Now you're over here doing push-ups. You told me to go get wind steady. Because you were standing out of line over here. Oh, yeah, I was talking to Mr. Gates. Tell him to take me off the muster. <laughs> Why did you tell let me know? Do what you told me, sir. You didn't want to deal with Oh, yeah. You can never know what a guy is thinking. Thinks about it, thinks about it, finally makes that decision. He's got that little bug in his head saying that, should I quit? And then that's it. The pain of day one lingers. For some, such as Demeter, yesterday's pain is today's sense of humor. So we got our first quitter. Look, the instructor can't be more right. I didn't spend a lot of time with the guys that quit, but they would always, you could look at them and you just knew they weren't doing well. This dude right here is at the O course, man. The O course. Like the easiest thing you do all day is the O course. This dude's over there making it bigger than it is. Oh, my arms are going to be hurt. My hands are going to be hurt. It's, my arms are going to be spent. I'm doing all these push-ups. Look, man, if you're worried about push-ups, you in the wrong place. You're doing about 4,000 push-ups a day at SEAL training. No BS, man. Like, you're doing so many push-ups, 
If you're worried about push-ups, then don't go. But it's just another one of those things that you just got to put behind you, man. You don't worry about how many push-ups you do. You don't worry about going to get wet and sandy and all that mess. You know, most of the time, if I remember right, you didn't. they didn't let you run the O course wet and sandy. So you knew you weren't going to get wet and sandy until afterwards for the most part. I might be mistaken in that memory, but it's been a long time. Let's just see how this plays out. Scale of 1 to 10, about 13. I fell off the balance logs today, so that was pretty bad. No the instructors dislike television cameras. All right, my dude said he fell off the damn fucking balance logs. Everybody done fell off the fucking balance logs. That's why they call the balance logs. Unless you got it rigged up and it doesn't roll, but shit, everybody done fell off the balance logs or to swing up onto the to the walk at the, after the right before the monkey bars. Everybody done that shit, man. Like, let's let's not make it a big deal. He talked about it's a 10 out of 13. They hyping this shit up for TV big time. And Demeter's interview lasts too long to suit them. Can you talk and push them out at the same time? Oh, yeah. All right, Their message is clear. There is only one reason to be here. So we about to see the boat graveyard. Look, there's just some days that buzz where you not going to win. Okay, you just not. And the instructors know you're not going to win. They just put you back into the water. They want to see how you're going to handle the adversity. How you're going to handle getting crushed by the waves six, seven, eight, nine times. Not getting out there. Once again, I always say this in IBF Surf Pass. I always look for the rip current. However, there are days like this. We were in there in El Nino. There's just days when ain't nobody going to get out. We had a two-mile time swim one time, man. Only two swim pairs out of damn 18 made it out past the surf zone. 16-foot plungers, real fast frequency. Some days you're just not going to beat Mother Nature. Man, take a second and look at this somber picture. All these boats up town, uh, upside down and all the little heads poking out the water. The surf is higher and the water colder than yesterday. The tired boat crews are overwhelmed. The SEAL instructors realize guidance, not punishment, is what's needed. A key for all potential SEALs is learning about their individual limits, knowing what is possible and what is not. Controlled aggression is the most important thing when you're doing this evolution. You have these waves that are coming in here. You have to get out there. You have to be aggressive, but you have to control it. You're not just paddling like a bunch of wild men, reckless abandoned. Tomorrow night, this is going to be very important because tomorrow night we're going to be doing night surf passage. You're not even going to see where those waves are coming from. All it takes is a little bit of fog, no moon, and it's going to be very scary. Hey, real talk, man. Everything you do is in the SEAL teams. Everything. Shout out to Henderson, man. He was at my SEAL team. We're doing, they're doing night marops, night surf passage just like this. Ended up breaking his neck and passing away, man. Everything we do in the SEAL teams is, is, you know, level five training. Death is imminent for the most part. This is no different, man. We've seen all the buzz. A lot of buzz is done in the daytime. But that's one of the big differentiating factors when you get to the SEAL teams. You do a lot of training in the daytime, but the, most of your teeth are cut at night when you can't see nothing, when the waves are big, when you might be the only person in the boat you got to look out for yourself. You got to look out for your gear. You got to look out for your teammates. So understand this. You hear me say it a lot, man. Buzz is kindergarten. We got IBF boats. They light. They ain't got a lot of gear in them. They flip over. You know, they're not really hurting nobody. You get to the SEAL teams. You got a Zodiac. You got the floorboards. You, you might have four or 500 pounds of gear in there. You flip that boat over and it lands on you. Bad things are going to happen. Bad things. So he he can't tell it better, no better, man. Turn the lights out, stakes go way up. Other thing is this controlled aggression they talking about. A lot of times we get out past that first level of surf and you got to sit there and time your run at the waves because the waves come in in sets. Usually seven, seven waves. Just depends on what the set looks like. The surfers know there's a big wave, then there's some medium waves, then there's a couple little waves, then there's some big waves again. So you always trying to time the set. So you might sit there and paddle over the wash two, three, four times before you say, hey, man, here's the run. Here's the small wave. Let's try to make a run at it. Harness it. Turn it into aggression. Do you think you'd rather be sitting out there on a ship right now? Yeah. yeah. It's a 
good day to be in buds. The sun is up, playing in the surf zone, have a little bit of fun. Let's do it, let's tear it up. Let me see you guys do it. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, come on, you got a ball, let's go, fire it up! It is said that the ocean can make cowards of us all. Every seal knows any man can be broken physically. So right there, right there, you didn't see a lot of dudes paddling when that boat started to, to heave up. If they had kept paddling, they could have crested that wave and not got flipped up. Man, you got to dig. Sometimes the boat's like this and you got to dig over that wave, man. Craziness, boy. Look, the, the, man, the difference between winning and losing at Buzz. It's always called a cut hair. Just one cut hair is the difference between you getting over that wave and you not. When Chief Taylor confronts Rivera, he chooses words, not push-ups, to communicate his displeasure. You were sitting out there past the surf zone. Instructors are in here wondering why you guys weren't coming in while everybody else was in here. Chief Taylor, I had to instruct my, my, my guys how to dump boat. We had a hard time dumping boat. Oh, Rivera, come on, man. Mr. Burns saw that you guys made it out. And he thought, well, that's great. They made it out. They were the only ones. But you weren't the only ones. There were a bunch of boat crews that were out there, turned around, started coming back in, trying to be successful. And you guys sat outside the zone. And now you're coming in here telling me that your guys had a problem dumping boat. It's the effort that we're looking for. That's the most important thing. We want the effort. And uh, in, that, in that instance, they weren't giving it to us. So my guy Rivera right there tried to pull a slick one. Go out there, sit out there for a while, not come back. You can sit out there for five, 10 minutes, catch your breath, but you can't sit out there for longer than that. Trust me, we've all done it. We paddle out there. You sit your butt out there, paddle around, dump boat, come back. You know, at this point, you might have been racing, but the fact that you got out there, that's all that matters. You know, we just saw this boat crew coming back in. You jacked. Man, if the boat turns sideways, it's flipping over. That's the facts. You got to try to paddle and keep it straight. It's cocks and trying to keep the... The guy's on the right side paddling to keep it straight, but as soon as it starts to turn, man, you know it's flipping over. Ain't nothing you can do. After yesterday, when I hurt my ankle, what I felt then wasn't really what I wanted to feel. I felt a little bit of relief that I was injured, and uh, that really like, bothered me a lot. I was like, well, is this really what I want, or am I just out here for the hell of it? You know, every time you go in the, you know, out of the water, one more person in your boat is supposed to go out with you, and the other guy was about to jump in, and I just said, don't worry about it, guys. Are you following this day? Yeah. Okay, that's what you want to do. Mr. Burns is standing over there. Go let him know what your intentions are, all right? Yeah. So look, man. Cats pulling themselves out all the time early on in Buds, man. They just pulling themselves out. You see them walking up to the instructors. You like deuces. You know another one's gone. Someone made a comment to me about the quitters. Look, man. Ain't no such thing as stopping a dude quitting here. Like, nobody's going to stop nobody from quitting in buds. Even your best friend. If he want to quit, you're going to let him quit. Because what we learned over and over and over, you might talk him out of quitting then, but he's just going to quit later. And that's the big thing in the SEAL teams, man. When you get to the SEAL teams, there ain't no such thing as quit. Like, you can't quit. You quit, everybody die. So, if you don't have it early on, that non-quit, no-quit mentality, the right mindset, it don't make no purpose. There ain't no sense in trying to help them. You could try to talk them out of it, all that shit. None of it's going to work. They already got them demons in their souls. So your best bet is just to let them go when they want to go. Cut them loose. My man Jackson just walked out the surf zone and quit. Trust me on this one. I just saw a lot of dudes do that same thing. That very first wave just creamed us. Well, I was rolling along the bottom. You know, you had to ask yourself, you know, this really seems like a good idea. You know, it's an honorable job. It's not for everybody. You lose a paddle is pretty much the same as taking the motor on the back of your boat and throwing it overboard. Hey, get over here. You know what that's going to do when you're in the surf zone and you got 80 pounds of gear each? You're going to get crunched and you're probably going to get killed. So you heard Chief Basto talking about it. 80 pounds of gear, that's just for you. You got the boat. He said you're going to get crunched, probably going to get killed. Kind of went like a little under the radar right there. I just told you my man Henderson got killed in the boat the same way. Trust me on this one, man. I always talk about kindergarten and the NFL. The stakes are so much higher in the SEAL teams. And notice this, we're not even talking about combat. We're just talking about everyday training, stateside. 
Somebody's dying every month in the SEAL teams in training. A lot of people don't realize that. That's what it is. We're not talking about combat. We're just talking about training-related deaths right now. And they in buzz right now, and they trying to relay it to the guys because they've been out in the teams. They know what it is. Hey, you're very uncomfortable. You're very cold. I don't think I can do this for the next six, six months. months or whatever. Right. You feel like you gave it your best shot. Oh, yeah. That six-month vision. Brody, if you had buzz, you can't be focused on anything but what's right in front of your face. Because if you start thinking about six months from now, next week, hell, if you think about two evolutions from now, boy, that, that monster going to creep in your soul and snatch it out of your body. You can't look into the future, man. You got to stay right there in the present, man. What's going on right now? This dude talking about he uncomfortable. I don't know if you were, even in the SEAL teams in PT, you were never damn comfortable, man. There was always something going on. If you want a comfortable job, if you want to, you know, live in a White House and, and, and have people serving you. This ain't the job to go into, man. You're a professional ditch digger. And every day it's either raining or snowing and you digging ditches, man. It's just how it is. So it's funny to me that this dude talking about I'm uncomfortable, man. Crazy. Just crazy. So look, man. Another great cut. Bunch Class 234. I hope you enjoyed this video reaction. Gave you a little insight into the mind of the quitters. Hey, man, it transcends life. You know, everybody's walked away from something. It's just how do you walk away from it? My thing is, you know, when we were in Buds, I was there. I didn't really ever think about quitting. You know, maybe the only thing that got close to it was when I first woke up in the morning being like, man, fuck. About to get kicked in the nuts all, oh, fuck all day. But then I fixed that, man. I started getting up. I only had about 25 seconds to get to formation, 40 seconds. I would shave, grab all my clothes, slide down the light pole from the second story to the first story and get dressed in formation. Never thought about it again. None of the hard evolutions, you know, shit. I used to love that shit, trying to get all them instructors to quit. That was my goal every day to get the instructors to quit. Hey, you enjoyed this reaction video, man? Smash the subscribe button. If you love this bad boy, send it to all your friends. Hit the little bell so you get the notification when we drop some more boom fire. And as always, we building champions for life.